You probably already know that you can hide a file on your Windows computer. You just right-click, move into the properties, select the checkbox for hidden, and there you go. The file might disappear. But this isn't all that interesting, because most folks already know about it, and it's pretty easy to just circumvent it. Hey, you can find and then unhide that file. Another option that's a bit more interesting is using alternate data streams, where you can still hide a file or data, whatever you want, inside of another file, and that is less obvious, but it's a little cutesy. Hey, a lot of researchers and folks in the cybersecurity scene acknowledge, oh, it's a little trinket, it's a little bit of a toy. Using alternate data streams as a technique has been known for many years, and usually it's not all that interesting, but I wanted to hone in on kind of an interesting, clever little trick that might be used to hide data even more than usual. And we got to see real threat actors, real adversaries, ransomware groups, and cyber criminals even use this in their own campaigns. So let me add a little bit of background context, just in case you're not familiar with alternate data streams. I'll go ahead and open up a command line just in PowerShell on my Windows 11 virtual machine, and I'll move into a directory just so we have a place to work in C Windows tasks. Now, let's say I wanted to create a file with any data that I want, just add it into a myfile.txt. How about that? I could go ahead and dir, validate that my file exists, as you can see that it does. And of course, if I were to type or cat that out in this case, I could see that value. Nice and easy. But it's interesting because I could potentially specify, look, I actually want a specific stream out of this. And stream is a argument that we're now being passed to sort of get content in PowerShell. Like, look, cat is just an alias for that. If I wanted to get content on that, we could specify the stream of anything in this case, but it doesn't actually have an alternate data stream set up for anything. It will, at least usually does, have by default a dollar sign data stream, and that is actually prefixed with a colon there to denote it, and that is just the regular usual file contents present. But if I were to actually set some content into another stream of that file, we could hide things and you might not even know that that's there. Let me show you this. Let's say I could set some content with a string like, ooh, a secret message, and I'll put that in to the stream given, maybe a secret. And actually, I'll go ahead and echo this into that file because I do want to denote that as my file.txt, but I'll just use write host or echo to get that on to the uh, current little pipeline here. And actually, I'm sorry, I believe that should be write output. You could use echo if you wanted to in that case, but write output is just the alias for that. If I were to use get alias or gal if we really wanted to, uh, on echo, that should just be my write output syntax. That command lit there. Now, that has been staged and set as a secret message hidden in the secret stream for that file. But look, if I were to go ahead and try to cat out that file, it's just the data that we supplied to begin with. We'd have to specify, I want to look at the stream that is the secret stream. Now we can retrieve our secret message. You needed to know that that data was there to begin with for you to be able to go uncover it, and those are some of the alternate data streams. But you could track that down. You could go find and see that content. Say that I were back in PowerShell and looking at my file, I could honestly get item, and you could specify that specific file, or you could just use anything in the current directory with an asterisk if you wanted to. But if you were to specify the stream that you wanted to look at, you could just, again, use an asterisk. A little bit of a wild card and say, look, just give me anything and everything here. And this pulls off a little bit of, little bit of magic here. Look, we get all of the properties here, and that colon dollar sign data stream is where that would kind of be present for the actual legitimate data, right? That was the any data that I want, the original contents we started with. But our secret stream, denoted with a colon secret, is going to have the length that we saw and hey, the message that we hid and tucked away within that alternate data stream. Now you could do this just as easily with like a full blown file if you want to put that in the mix. And I could do this in like 
old school command prompt, right? Say that I were to type out my Windows System 32 calc.exe, and this is horrendous. We're just gonna be displaying a binary executable file onto the stream here. That's now in our output. But if I were to go ahead and then try to type that and then put it into my file.txt with a colon to denote that stream, look, I could just say, a calculator would be in the mix if I could type. Okay, <laughs> that should work here. Looks just fine. If I were to dir, we could see our file as usual, but nothing specific there to indicate, look, there's a whole nother calculator application embedded in it and a secret message. Now we could use in PowerShell, as we did just a moment ago, that get item syntax, or in classic cmd.exe, old school, we could run the dir command that we just used, but use slash r, and that will indicate in showcase, look, we have a couple streams here. I know my face is in the way, but take a look. There's our original file, and then with the colon to denote and prefix other streams, we have calculator in the mix and our secret message. Now there's a little bit of nuance in how we might pull back the data that we want in, hey, some hidden alternate data stream, or even invoke an application or exe that we just bundle inside. Inside of classic vanilla cmd.exe, I wouldn't just as easily be able to type out my file.txt, given it, hey, the data that we originally had, but if I actually wanted to reference our secret stream, that would not work all that well for me. If I were to do this in PowerShell, pwsh, Oh, okay, too much time on Linux. That would work just fine. Copying and using this exact syntax. Note that it might whine and complain because it's going to consider it a drive letter given the colon here. But if I were to actually use a dot slash to denote that, look, we've got the value as usual. But again, how do I execute now my calculator? Because if I wanted to, I wanted to run dot slash, let's say that my file and calculator in the mix. Fingers crossed, no, that does not work. Program calculator failed to run, system cannot find the file specified. So what could we do? There are a couple tricks where you actually use WMI, the Windows Management Instrumentation, and the command line utility, which I know a lot of folks might say, look, that's being deprecated. Totally get it. It's not deprecated in my mind if you can still run it on the Windows 11 system. So look, I'll see it when I believe it. I'll believe it when I see it. Let me go ahead and do a process call create on that myfile.txt given the calculator. Fingers crossed. Ooh, that whines and complains. I will need to specify that within quotes if I wanted to actually run that. That still whines and complains. Probably better to invoke that in CMD. Let me see if that will behave for me. We'll copy and paste this one more time. This is where we get a little bit finicky here. Even not including that with a dot slash that will still attempt but fail. I found that this is most successful when you include the entire absolute path here. Here, I'll run that one more time because it's not directly in the foreground. Let me just run that command and now we'll see our calc pop. Looking good. Now, there are a couple other ways that we could either create, add to, expand, add more contents into an alternate data stream and invoke them and run and execute programs and applications that we bundle up inside. But that is not specifically the focus that I wanted to dig into because I was teasing that idea that there is some clever use case that I hadn't seen before and genuinely comes from a recent Threat Actor campaign. And this all comes from a recent report on the ALF V or Black Cat ransomware gang. It turns out they had kind of a clever technique and just a little bit of nuance in how they used alternate data streams to hide persistence and do a little bit of defense evasion. Hey, trying to get around maybe application whitelisting or hey, antivirus, EDR, whatever, whatever, all those bells and whistles, something that we can dig into here in this video. But look, before we do, while we're chatting about threat intelligence and threat reports and what threat actors are up to across the cybersecurity landscape, look, let me say, hey, I am trying my best to get videos like this out and about as frequently as I can and share free cybersecurity education with you. The only way that I can really do that with all the other stuff that I tend to do is with the help of some sponsorships. So please allow me to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, CrowdSec. It's 
crowdsourced threat intelligence and cybersecurity brought to the community from the community. CrowdSec is an active open source security solution where each and every user automatically contributes to greater defense and protection because they participate in sharing signals with everyone else. Think of it like massively multiplayer cybersecurity. Think about all the hard work that comes from a security operations center or researchers and analysts that dig through sensors and honeypot data, developing detection rules or tracking threat intelligence. Normally, that info is gated and sold to you as a product. But CrowdSec takes a different approach. Cybersecurity threats and attacks seen on your devices or anyone else's are added to a collective. So the whole community improves and it's all open source. I've used CrowdSec personally for quite some time and I know a handful of other business owners that use it. And everyone loves the communal threat intelligence feed. Join the crowd and enrich your threat intelligence together with CrowdSec. You can get started completely for free with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash CrowdSec. Huge thanks to CrowdSec for sponsoring this video. All right, so back on the keyboard, look, this threat report digs into really the usual use case of alternate data streams. And folks might be familiar with this. Look, the zone identifier, also known as the mark of the web, that Windows will naturally use when you download a file from the internet and you have to unblock it to be able to use it. That's the origin of that feature here using alternate data streams, but it could be used and abused by, I don't know, maybe a little bit of research, maybe a little bit of offensive security, some threat actors doing damage here. And what they did, Black Cat and Elfie, was they created a reverse SSH executable on the Windows system and literally the path C colon backslash system. That's the name of the file that they use. And they hide it in a C volume root directory, which is a little bit interesting. They created create this alternate data stream that they'll call host process for Windows service, and then invoke it, execute it as a service, and then delete the executable from the original location. Now this is interesting, because if we dig into the screenshot here, you might be able to see it. We'll go ahead and actually set the content given a stream as we did previously, setting it to the C colon backslash root drive, the top of the file system, the C volume. Now that's peculiar to me because look, we might expect that in a file, but you could do it just as well on a directory. And what's to stop you from using it on the root of the file system if you're administrator, if you have the privileges to be able to do that, in which case the threat actor did, and maybe you do in your own campaigns or assessments. But look, they'll invoke a service with C colon backslash and then another colon to reference the alternate data stream and then arguments to that reverse SSH program or executable that they used. They'd stage that and use that as a backdoor and have some persistence. Here is the wild thing though, that I think is really interesting and maybe gives a little bit more love to this alternate data streams technique because choosing the system directory C colon backslash, the root of the file system that actually hides it. It actually is not shown when you're using dir slash r or slash a, whatever we used previously and the get item common PowerShell commandlets. It does not show up even though it does that naturally for all the other locations. So let's test that out. Let's see it in action. Let me go ahead and actually minimize this command line here because I do wanna open up a terminal or command prompt or PowerShell, whatever, as an administrator. So I'll have the capability to write to that C colon backslash root of the file system. So let me navigate to there and I'll go ahead and actually create a new alternate data stream where I could echo, this is a completely hidden message and I'll pipe that to our set content on our C colon backslash drive, given whatever stream that I want. We can call that totally hidden and fingers crossed, I haven't gotten anything wrong here. I'll hit enter on this. Okay, no errors, nothing wrong. So that is set and staged. And now let me use the same commandlets or DIR command that we did previously to try to look for those alternate data streams. I'll use get item on literally anything here, given the C colon backslash, and I'll use the stream of anything. Just show me whatever you got. Fingers crossed. Okay, we see something set for this vfcompat.dll file, given that is a file in the current directory. Same thing with app verify UI DLL, the natural data 
section here, that stream, they're just natural files. So that's going to be displayed and rendered out. But doing that literally, again, on C colon backslash did not give any detail. Like, <laughs> it's hidden. You don't get to see it. Say we were back in command prompt, cmd.exe. I were to run at dir slash r. Uh, won't show me anything like our secret message, uh, dir slash r slash a in this case. Maybe give us all of the files. Hey, hidden system files and whatever, recycle bin, other agent things, but nothing related to our new secret message and that alternate data stream. Can I pass that with our c colon backslash directory there? Still nothing. You don't get to see it. And I know this is a small cutesy thing, but I think it's kind of cool. There are some things to keep in mind though. This trick relies on those admin privileges, which isn't, oh, okay, a deal breaker, but it does, you know, add a little bit more of a stumbling block in the mix. So I wondered, could we do anything different and potentially do that as just a regular classic low privilege user? Back on the command line, you can see I'm in my administrator command prompt here, but if I wanted to navigate back to just our low privilege Joe Schmo account, look, I could go back to doing what I was doing, trying to set whatever on our C colon backslash stream, my ADS for alternate data streams. Uh, I should be in PowerShell to do that, lol, that's funny. Let me use that same syntax again. But that will whine and complain because it doesn't have permissions as that low privileged Joe Schmo. It needs to be the root of the file system though. So I got curious and I was wondering how could I recreate maybe a root drive? Could I use like net use to, I don't know, use like a SMB or network share that I just mount to a Z colon backslash or X, whatever. We could just as well use a substitute, sub ST, I think that's a thing. Yeah, associate a path with a drive letter or I could specify a virtual drive that I want to assign to a path. So could I use my S substitute, I don't know, maybe like an F drive set to our C Windows tasks, and that will work, right? Now I could navigate into my F directory, that drive, and look, I'm back where I was just a moment ago. But I don't think I could really easily set the contents on this F drive because I'll get the exact same error. I could do, I don't know, a net use, what is it, like G with a backslash to localhost and my C drive, Windows tasks. Will that work for me? I don't know if I have that even set up the way that I should. I might have that syntax wrong and I'm waiting for you to let me know in the comments. <laughs> So with that said, I don't think that I could actually go ahead and do this from a low privilege user account. If you can figure it out, let me know. I'm super interested. But say we hop back to get to our admin prompt to do this a little bit more. Hey, let's go back to our administrator shell. Let's get back to PowerShell so we can very easily work with our creating different streams here. And again, let's just literally use calc. Let's use get content on C Windows system32 calc.exe. Or if I could set that to my C colon backslash and make the stream be calculator. Or if you wanted to make this clever for syntax when you want to actually invoke it and use it within your operations. I don't know, maybe you make this like Bluetooth connection adapter or however you want to blend in and masquerade. The same thing that, hey, maybe ransomware gang threat actor Black Hat Alf V did. Let me just put that to calculator, so that's present there. Now, could I just Wimic process call create as one way to invoke this and just use my C colon backslash colon calculator? Let me minimize this so it's on the foreground and fingers crossed that fires. Uh, I don't think so. Odd. What about with a forward slash? Invalid verb switch. Okay, denote this as uh, single quotes here. Invalid verb switch. Let's use our backslash. That won't work. What about just a backslash colon? Still doesn't work. It seems like it's successful, but it's not giving me any other calculator pop-up. Can I just try like a start process given the backslash calculator? No, don't know what that is. C colon backslash, still don't know what that is. Even if we specify the file path, will that work for me? No. So eventually I think, look, a little bit of research, a little bit of Googling, doing our homework is worthwhile. And I had found this gist, this GitHub gist from 
API Zero Cradle or Odd Varmo, genius individual, doing incredible stuff. And look, this is like old. This is from 2018 when he put out an article, blog post, some work on this. And these are all the different things you might be able to use. And hey, just a couple examples for adding contents to an alternate data stream. You saw us use type just a little bit ago where you have the colon to denote the stream that you want. But look at all the other things that you might be able to do. Find string, cert util, make, cab, reg export, print, PowerShell, curl, CMD, etc., etc., etc. We could pull stuff out just with other syntax like this, maybe pulling it into another file to then use. Maybe that could be worthwhile for your tradecraft. But executing from the alternate data stream is what I am super interested in, especially knowing this trick that from the root of the file system, C colon backslash, it doesn't show up when you try to hunt for that ADS alternate data stream. So what else could we do knowing that Wimic presumably isn't working well for me? Do I wrap it in single quotes and double quotes like they did? Let's try it. Like, how am I getting that wrong? Let me go back here, Wimic process call create. Still no dice. What if we use that set content with the .exe file extension at the end? Does that somehow make this thing smarter? That doesn't make sense to me. No, okay, let's move on. If we wanted to fall down the rabbit hole, we could just put together our own custom DLL. But I would like to try and see, like is even this Wimic call happening? Does calculator ever even open? So let me see if I can just put our process explorer side by side. Let me go down to our gross nested uh, PowerShell stage here. <laughs> Too many things that I have open, that's dumb. Let me see if I could just run this again. See if I see any of the child processes spawn. Nothing. Am I just doing this wrong? Is my syntax bad? We could use process monitor and see if that even fires. Let me add a filter for if the process name is calc.exe. Granted, I don't think that's what I want. Can I use wimic.exe? Let's try to add that. It'll of course try to run it, but will that work? Am I even gonna be able to see the call? Yeah, it, it would help if I were listening. Okay, press that button. How about I do path contains calculator or just calc, right? Maybe that will maybe give me some love here. If I add that, okay, fingers crossed. Nothing. Let's completely derail that then and not go down that rabbit hole. So we could just slap together a DLL and I do have a little bit of that staged in my uh, John directory for NIM tricks where I'll just spit this out in NIM. That's a little bit easy for me. If I were to open up in the current directory, just my text editor with the readme for a couple NIM tricks that I've just, I don't know, given myself a cheat sheet with. Say that I wanted to create a DLL with NIM, so I'll go ahead and use this syntax and then try to compile it. I do have a NIM DLL.NIM staged here, and I'm gonna be using OS proc because look, we could fire open the message box if we wanted to, that's a worthwhile trick, or we could pop calc, maybe execute a command, but I think a valid test is seeing, look, can we just write stuff to a file? Because if for whatever reason, a graphical user interface for our running program doesn't open up or just gets closed immediately, I'd like to validate code execution might work as quick as it could where, hey, we at least write to a file that maybe we could control. So let's use this nimdll.dll with a quick and easy way to validate and test things. I've got this syntax that I could use just to copy and paste this. I believe the file is now nimdll.nim. So back on my command line, let me go ahead and paste in that syntax. Let nim compile this thing. Looks like it's good. Uh, I believe now I've got my nimdll.dll. Okay. Now, could we put all these puzzle pieces together where I use run DLL32 to actually invoke an alternate data stream for C colon backslash with a DLL that I want to run? Let's use our set content here. We'll actually get the contents of our current directory, nim tricks, and we'll use our nim dll.dll as our payload. Set this to the set content C colon backslash stream for, I don't know, test bed. How about that? Is that a fine name? That's been created now. Could I now run dll32.exe, validate that that is working for me? Should I, should I do this from CMD? I, I never trust PowerShell and some of that syntax. Run dll32.exe? It doesn't matter, I'm, 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 it'll work just fine. C colon backslash colon test bed. Will that fire? No. 
Well, you know what? We don't even know for sure because we need to be able to see our C Windows tasks directory. So let me move that to the other side here. We have my file.txt and some other artifacts, but could I now run this and specify that I do want to run DLL main? There was a problem starting testbed. It couldn't track down that DLL. Okay, what about just one as the opportunity? No? What is the export in this case? It should be DLL main, but is it NIM main in this case? No. Even if I were to just use run DLL on this current NIM DLL file on its own, will that evoke? How about just one error entry, but it does write the file when I use that naturally. So with C colon backslash, I still can't get that to fire. Am I doing that wrong? I'm once again, very interested. C script is staging this if it is a script.vbs uh, file that's wrapped in and included in the alternate data stream. That's an interesting idea. Gives us a little bit more runway just as well. We could do this with Visual Basic script or PowerShell or J script or anything that we want. I'm pretty sure four files might work. This takes a little bit of staging. Like there's a lot of syntax here that might not be the most innocent or easy thing to hide, but I'm curious if that would work and run for us. Let's go back to our four files, C Windows System J2, Notepad.exe, all that stuff I don't particularly care about, but I do want my C colon backslash and then the stream that we want to run, it'll try to fire an executable in this case. So let's go back to our old calculator that we had staged and let's try that. If I CLS, can I fire this off? No. Am I getting that syntax wrong? Like this error is about the version, but uh, like if I were to use this and go back to our C Windows tasks, my file.txt, that has a calculator stream from what we were building earlier, right? Will that fire it off? It does. So, okay, something about the C colon backslash absolute root of the file system volume out will not work as well. We've got other options, maybe mavinject, mshta, control.exe. This one I'd love to see if we could get that in action because control.exe is the control panel, right? Like if I just run control.exe, it props open the Windows control panel. And that would look really good if we were trying to hide and masquerade for a campaign. Uh, for some cheesy Dumbo living off the land, right? Sure we could get leet, do some Hell's Gate, whatever, EDR bypass, kernel driver exploit zero days, but this is still kind of fun to play with. Say I were to use control.exe, given our my file opportunity, that's the one that we've created just kind of as we were poking and playing beforehand, that will presumably, hopefully, no, not invoke calculator because that needs a DLL. So if, could I try to run that just as well with my C colon backslash test bed? where I know that that is my NIM stager. Will that fire? No. What about the DLL that I literally have in the current directory? NIM.DLL.DLL. No dice, because that probably needs to be set as an alternate data stream. But anyway, okay, eventually we get to the service. And this is exactly what the threat actor used in their report, at least what we got to see in that threat report. So presumably this would work, right? Like looking back in the screenshot, even though look all the stuff that they showcase later on, really cool that doesn't get seen when you look for it with get item or dir slash r. But this specific syntax here, when we're using get content on a executable, retrieving its material, putting it in to a binary, and that alternate data stream here for c colon backslash, it is invoked with SC to control Windows services. It creates a temporary service, a little binary path, and then fires it off with net start SSH server. Could we do the very, very same and finally invoke just simple calc uh, out of our C colon backslash alternate data stream? Before we fall down the rabbit hole with that, by the way, let me say, if you would like a link to this gist and you wanted to check it out, look, they have a couple other options with PowerShell where maybe you have, oh, some PowerShell scripting language that you want or PS1 file that you embed in the alternate data stream. Regedit could work with some registry tweaks. Bits admin could probably stage an executable just fine, but it takes a lot of syntax. Bits admin kind of staging and plumbing that all. AP or app VLP.exe, I believe that is one of the Microsoft Office uh, dependencies. So you'd have to have that installed on the target environment for that to even be able to work. It is not naturally in your path from just a fresh 
vanilla Windows install. CMD could run a batch script. FTP could again run specific commands. There are some other tricks with bash, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But look at this, 2018. I am, am I behind the ball? Like, I don't know. I just think it's kind of neat to see it come to life with that uh, threat actors use case and the little gimmick of hiding it on the root of the file system. I don't want to beat you over the head with this, but I will do our last check. And I will say, maybe I get this wrong. Maybe I'm totally incorrect. Maybe this thing didn't work. Maybe it does work. I'd love to get your opinion and your feedback if you'd like to try this, but let's go see, can I hit the jackpot here, creating a service with our calc.exe setup and staged. Let me get back to my scratch pad in Sublime Text, and we know that we're working with C colon backslash, and we had what? A calculator stream staged? And let me validate that because I know I've been doing that over and over again, but I am in PowerShell at this point. Can I just go ahead and type C colon C calculator and that will return a bunch of junk for me? It does, okay, cool. I think I have the set content here that we use when we have, oh, the test bed. That's probably worthwhile doing just as well. But since these are binary files, I should do this as raw. I should have done that to begin with the, the backslash raw. I saw that in their syntax and I wanna make sure that I do that one more time. Let me do this with calculator just as well and stage C windows system 32. Calc.exe, those should be set. Now retrieving that, okay, cool. It is as it should be. So say we create an evil service with the bin path of our alternate data stream based off of C colon backslash, and they are presumably using that as command prompt to then echo something into, oh, it works, to prove and validate that that happens. I am not super into that. I don't think we need to do that right now, but maybe that's where I just get things wrong. If I were to just use my C colon backslash calculator with my alternate data stream, set up as the evil service, start as auto, whatever, whatever, I could just grab the syntax just as well from the screenshot that the threat report included. They use the exact same syntax, sc.exe, create, name of thing, with the path, display name, start equals auto, error equals ignore. Will that work for me? Let's try this out. Let me get back to my command prompt. Let's sc.exe, fingers crossed, that will successfully create the service. But now, could I go validate and maybe just keep an eye on, like I'll pin this to the side. Maybe we open up like Process Explorer to try to see if things happen here. It will be run as a service, so this might be hard to see. But we'll keep an eye on the bottom, hey, number of processes running. Because now I want to go ahead and sc start my evil service. Will that work? Oh, you know what? I'm in PowerShell, that should be sc.exe. Gosh darn it. Fingers crossed, service did not respond or control in a timely fashion. Why? They use net start and the name of the service. Will that work any better for me? Net start evil service, fingers crossed, not responding to the control function. Okay, I do see a new process running though. Did it do something weird? We don't have a calculator running and we don't have any new files. Can I delete my evil service or are you in like a zombie state right now? Okay, no, cool, that works just fine. So let me create this with now using our test bed, which is a DLL, so I don't think that that would work as it should. Uh, but it's worth trying. Nope, yep. <laughs> that also won't work for me. Can I just make a custom executable? Maybe some stupid scripting nim again, nimexe.nim. And like, we don't need to do anything fancy at that point. We just literally need to execute a command and write a file. Like that's all that I wanna do. Will this compile and work just fine? Let me grab all the stupid release flags and strip binaries and stuff to be able to spit that out. Now I will compile my nimexe.nim and that should come to life. Cool. Okay, so fingers crossed now. Uh, again, I'm just kind of putting these side by side, but if I were to literally just run my nimexe.exe, it will then echo and fail, but it will write the file. So that is enough of a proof of concept for me. Will this work if we stage that as our service and try to invoke it? Is it just running in the background that I'm totally unaware to, or am I just making a complete fool of myself? Let's go ahead and set the content of our C colon backslash stream for 
payload. That's fine for a name. And then let's use the current directory of our nim tricks and our nim exe.exe file. Will that work? Now, knowing the specific name of it, I could just type c colon backslash colon payload, and that will give me our binary, which works well. But now, can I craft this service with scxe create evil service bin path now with payload being our evil service start and try to work with this? Fingers crossed. If I put this side by side, let's create the service. Okay, yep, we'll delete the service then. <laughs> Now we've created it one more time. sc.exe start evil service. Will this work? No. Wait, what? It made the file, but it errored. So it did execute and we have that code execution and it's totally hidden. Can I delete this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I do that again? Start. And it does it, it does it, it does it. it <laughs> What else would work in that case? Like, was I just wrong all along? Am I crazy? What are the other things that we know that would work? We could do Wimic process call create on our C colon C payload, right? Will that work? It ran, it fired. Was I just crazy? What else did I miss? Bits admin we could try, at VLP we know would have limited runway, bash if we had it with WSL, would four files work? Did I just have that all wrong? Is it? Was it because I missed the raw uh, argument? Was that literally all that it was? Let me go back to C colon backslash, uh, and then we know that we'll use payload. How about that? Copy paste, we can delete our old we control that we know is our kind of, hey, temperature check for whether or not we get code execution. I believe it should work. It does. Four files works just as well. Was it because I had stuff just copied wrong? Now I want to know if control.exe would have worked. Like would the command, would the control panel one work? Cause that is gorgeous. Like if you can hide this on like natural O control panel, just opening something up with uh, DLL, I think that's kind of, kind of cool. What did we have that one set for? We had a set content for our nim dll dot dll, and let's go put it one more time in. I think we said test bed just to make just to make sure. C colon that now control dot exe. If I run that with my C colon backslash of test bed, it is going to point to the dll, which would hopefully be executed and then ran by control dot exe. And that one doesn't work. Like, am I getting that wrong? Is it because of how I built that DLL, which is to C sharp or whatever C plus plus one work just fine? That's worth a little bit more experimenting. I don't know. I could totally be wrong and I'm uh, okay with that. So please, please, please do let me know in the comments below. But at the very least, you can get invocation and just execute the binary, not even, a, I don't know, pulling data out of it if you needed to do that or hiding things as you'd like. But at the very least, you could literally just bundle it all into and then execute with that service capability. And look, at the end of the day, ultimately all that I wanted to show you, all the thing that I think is pretty sweet is that if we move into our root of the file system, again, it requires that admin privileges. But look, you've escalated privileges. I don't know. You've got root compromise admin NT authority system on the box. Nothing wrong with that. You slap in your persistence and maybe you use this technique. The thing is, if I were to actually, again, get item, everything, stream, anything, we're not gonna see all of those things that we just tucked away and hid in the root of the file system, C colon backslash. That's kind of sweet. I think in my humble opinion, DIR slash R slash A, same exact thing, no indication of the alternate data stream that you just put in place. That's cool. All right, look, with all that said, I'm so sorry. I know I've been rambling. I know I've been ranting. I know it kind of fell down the rabbit hole there. But look, this one was kind of fun. And seriously, I think it's a little bit neat. And hey, those are the things that you might want to put into your arsenal here. Add to your toolkit if you are emulating the adversary. If you're doing some of that red teaming, ethical hacking, penetration testing, or at the very least, just knowing what threats are out there. And with that, it's totally awesome to see that sort of stuff in the threat report. And it does go to show, ooh, maybe Maybe that's a little bit of a notch above, and maybe that shines some new light on pretty old, well-known and common technique for those alternate data streams. But 
Anyway, I just think it's cool. If anything, I do want to tell you that CrowdSec is just as cool. So please, please, please do give them some love. Take a look at the link in the description. And thank you so much to CrowdSec for sponsoring this video. And thank you especially for watching. Please do all those YouTube algorithm things, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let me know what you think of this video. I hope you had some fun, maybe learned something new. And if you kicked the tires, played around with it just as well, let me know. Thanks, I'll see you in the next one.